What's up everybody, it's Adrian here. And in today's episode of Lightshare Labs, we're gonna be taking a look at a painting that I did on one of my YouTube live streams. We're just gonna be talking about how I used the same tool that Dom mentioned in the previous episode. Remember that AI-based NVIDIA Golgan or whatever it's called. And yeah, so if you have any questions about the process or anything like that that we could discuss in further videos in the future, just please let us know down below in the comment section. Thank you so much and enjoy. So what are we painting today, man? So this was a landscape idea that came to happen during a live stream that I did on my YouTube like a couple months ago, I think. I wasn't really sure what to, what to paint, so I resorted to this NVIDIA canvas thing, which is exactly like what you used on the previous video the Gauguin mm -hmm. thing or whatever it's called. <laughs> so that name, this is yeah. the name they gave to the desktop app now. And I wanted to try right. it. But as you see, I just went to the browser version as well, which is mm -hmm. indeed called Gauguin. And the reason I did this was because now they allow you to input um, text and the program generates some images based on that text. So. I see. So do you usually like change the colors like that off the bat? You just go right into color balance and adjust the hues or do you keep the same sort of I hues? Can, yeah, I can either paint with some blending mode like overlay or multiply or something like that to kind of adjust not only the colors but also the, the values themselves. Or I can use stuff like, yeah, like you what you mentioned about the color balance or um, color saturation, which is this one I'm using right now, it's Control U. Oh, that's cool. Um, I sometimes forget about what the the actual name of the tool is. I just remember the key, um, the the shortcuts. <laughs> right. So, uh, as you see here, this was like a happy accident type of moment. Again, it was like an entirely freestyle episode. Like I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do, and here mm -hmm. I am creating some texture, uh, awesome. stretching it to match the perspective and stuff, and just trying my my luck around it looks this. like it's yeah the perspective is zooming straight into the distance like it's a yeah. vast open yeah. field of rocks a wide Those lens rocks, type right? of mm -hmm. yeah well i'm not sure at this moment but um i keep exploring and my idea for this was to depict a landscape from my ip heaven Orion, which uh has these type of colors these yellowish hellish type of vibes you know this atmosphere yeah. that mm -hmm. doesn't look inviting at all <laughs> so um it's got like a dark kind of ethereal yeah, exactly mm -hmm. so i'm not even sure what this should be but then i reminded myself that i do have some sort of rivers you know of some sort like some liquid stuff flowing around mm -hmm. so you'll see later in the video i try to recreate some reflections and some some stuff that makes it look like it's not land, it's not uh, sand, or it's not, it's nothing like that. It's more liquid. Right. And I can see like point, your lighting is yeah. you know, more off into the distance. Like, did you think about that beforehand or did you just kind of pull from the, the, uh, the Goggin so, reference? So I, at this point, I entirely forgot about the Gauguin reference. I'm no longer using that. Uh, I only used it for the first. I mean, if you guys just stop the video right now, go back to the beginning, you'll see how this has nothing to do with what we had <laughs> in the initial steps. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to find a focal point for this. And that's where, that's where this lighting thing helps me a lot. You see, now I'm bringing mm -hmm. back the initial reference. Um, and this is achieved by focusing on that specific point right there, uh, which I ended up discussing whether I should add something else there, some specific shape, some, I don't know, a character or something else. But yeah. for now, I kept going with this, with my plan, you know, to depict <clears throat> this vast type of landscape. So I yeah, pulled I really up some like references. The... Yeah, the concentrated lighting has that really nice effect on the landscape. Yeah. It's almost like there's this really big cloud cover in the foreground. 
And exactly. there's like this god ray mm-hmm. speaking through a bit. Yeah. It's kind of hard for me to explain the the physics of it right now, but this is supposed to be a dark place, right? Where you see the horizon line kind of glowing. So I was really resisting my temptation to be, you know, accurate with the lighting thing and just make the value structure make sense with the the sky and everything to make it more to make it brighter, right? Like yeah. that that would be the natural thing to do. But in my case I needed to I needed that to be dark. So here I'm adding some more hue variations to play around with not only oh. that uh what's what are it those called? elements that you're adding oh. right now? <laughs> those are supposed to be some giant organic structures that provide that kind of gloomy um steamy type of atmosphere so Mm -hmm. they are responsible for those clouds that you see above and i was since i'm in love with this organic type of vibe of them there was no way to go wrong so i was just pulling those references back to to check on some shapes and stuff and here I'm trying to create some depth by adding this darker element closer to the camera. And also there's a little guy right there, almost in the middle of the shot, you see? To kind of uh, understand what the size of these things are. It's a huge world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really like how you compose a scene in a way where it trails the eye towards the distance. And it's almost like a lake, it looks like, right? Like an yeah, acid yeah, yeah. lake of some sort. Mm-hmm. That's the point, yeah. 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 And it's also hard to balance all these things because if you have way too many elements on screen, they kind of fight for attention. So how do you manage to, you know, divert that attention towards one or another? Well, you take away some protagonism from the sides or from this other one. You'll see how this contrast um, helps to emphasize one thing or another thing so that's when you have to know how to just push away the rest of things and i think i will start to add more atmospheric perspective to kind of get rid Mm of some distractions here and there um but yeah it's again (laughs) the the tone stuff it's just an attempt to see this blue thing that i'm doing right now it's like oh that's I'm, cool yeah i'm trying to give some more what's the word man <laughs> color <laughs> richness like I guess. a like, yeah to not only have like a counterbalance or something or exactly yeah, yeah yeah but it has to be so subtle that it's not like they're competing you know against each other right so this is mostly a warm piece it's a warm tone piece i was i was considering some steam there and how much yeah. like photo texture would you say you'd use like or when does it get too much or too little depending on like which areas you need photo bashing hmm so i guess i would try to use photo textures with some blending mode like multiply and stuff like that like you see the very floor close to the camera it's it, that's the one that has the texture still on um I usually do this in the areas that I, you know, I try to put some more emphasis on or, but again, it's, it's a matter of balancing it out according to what you have in mind. And I like this method because, you know, the way I paint sometimes it's like a discovery type of painting. Like the more I paint, the Mm -hmm. more I figure out about, about the painting and stuff, unless you start with a clear idea in mind, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't tend to use too too much texture and stuff. Right. Yeah, I notice how like when I see your process, you go into a more experimental style, which I think is really cool. You kind of see where the shapes are and, you know, it kind of drives the composition on its own when you start playing around with different elements, putting things like here and there and then like throwing on some photo texture just to see like where the happy accidents are and it just yeah. turns out <laughs> super dope like to some people awesome, that man. might not seem a reliable 
<laughs> formula <laughs> but i like it man look i don't yeah. waste too much time either so it's it's a win-win for me and you see how That's i good. landed that kind of um tower or something like that over there that seems to mm -hmm. be very perfect uh in contrast with what's around it so that was my attempt of creating some focal point there i wasn't really sure yet what that will be yeah. but you can see me trying stuff around all around yeah, i noticed you're having your reference on the side too from your ip yeah so that's that, mostly that for the help? color okay hmm. color reference yeah yeah color and mood and just to you know to make sure how to not forget how uh hazy or how steamy the environment is because i i was getting the impression that the things at the very back are way too dark for mm -hmm. such a such a scene so yeah I'll, i would try to correct that so the ultimate question of all what brush do you use <laughs> <laughs> like how many brushes do you use mostly on for painting mm. when you say I would say, at most, six or seven. And I have like, yeah, I'm not sure if it's gonna show on this video at any point, but, oh, you can see the little characters as well. I was just uh, trying stuff. Is that know. a scorpion? Uh, like it's a kind of, yeah, that kind of type of creature. I don't know exactly what it is, but, because this place cool. is supposed to be like, populated by gruesome creatures, you know? stuff yeah. that you should be afraid of and stuff <laughs> so um yeah i wouldn't want to go there <laughs> yeah you, you should you shouldn't <laughs> uh about the the brushes i i tend to stay i like the round brush a lot although you see me using this steam brush quite a lot because it's very convenient for this piece in particular it's really cool to mm -hmm. make clouds and stuff but ultimately i think i resort more to the very basic ones i have a square brush as well that I got from Mark Burnett cube brush so mm -hmm. that's pretty handy um, but yeah that's cool. pretty much it I, I try to stay simple as much as I can sometimes you know as much as I like the the way Greg Rutkowski or you know artists like that use those very textured brushes and stuff mm -hmm. I can't do it like they they do it I don't feel like that's me so I got yeah. too comfortable with my you have your these, own like, these brushes unique yeah. style I feel so it's cool thank that you're you, using these brushes yeah awesome process really loved it thank you so much well if you guys have any further questions for this any anything tell us what's on your mind what would you like to see in the in the next episodes and yeah thank you so much for watching I just hope to see you guys in the next episode Cool. See you guys.